Hi everyone, my name is Noelle Kay, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm going to be talking about the Wonderbox stove. Actually, Wonderbox oven. Has anyone here ever heard about a Wonderbox? You have? You have? Okay. Um, this is otherwise known as heat retention cooking, fireless cooking, icebox cooking. Um, instructions for this Wonderbox came from a booklet published by the Compassion of South Africa in 1978, 1979, and 1980 that works like a slow cooker. I like to refer to it as my um, non-electric slow cooker. While one may use it solely for um, emergency situations, you can easily incorporate this in your everyday cooking routine. You only need a minimum amount of fuel, whether you're using a stovetop, propane, rocket stove, solar oven, volcano stove, you only need a little bit amount of fuel, about 2 to 15 minutes of your fuel source, and then you can place it in the Wonder Box to finish um, cooking your food to a required temperature. I'm sorry, you want to cook it for about 2 to 15 minutes to that required temperature before you place it in your Wonder Box. This particular one here has been filled with polystyrene beads, otherwise known as the bean bag, the bean bag filler. This one here has been filled with pine shavings. It's the stuff that you lay down on the ground for animals. You can see it's at a feed store in a three cubic bag. Um, a whole bag will fill about three of, almost three of these. If you don't want to use either one, you can stuff it with, if you want to make these later on, you can stuff it with cotton, you can stuff it with wool, you can stuff it with uh, sawdust, feathers, um, hay, straw, aluminum foil. The Cozen Foundation, it's a Dutch non-governmental organization, and they make heat retention um, cookers in parts of Chad and Niger. Fuel and like charcoal sometimes can be very um, dangerous for women and children to collect. It also can be very expensive, and so they've come up with um, these heat retention cookers, and that's how we've come to learn of it. Have you guys ever seen those rice bags, those egg rice bags? You can take those, and they'll take those and put two of them together, and then they'll, in between them, they'll fill it with a insulator. So this is what you're doing here. Um, if you don't have something like that, I've actually taken horse feed bags and put the two together <coughs> and in between it filled it with an insulator and use it the same way. If you don't have a Wonder Box, there's different ways of doing heat retention cooking without it. Let me show you one way here. This is a cooler. Underneath it, you'll see this is a wool blanket here, and the pot fits snugly, has been fitted snugly there, and then it has a pillow, you just put it on the top. You want to make sure whatever kind of container you're using, you just want to make sure you have as little air space as possible, as little, little uh, as, few, as few air pockets as possible. Another thing you can do is a laundry basket. If you don't have a cooler, you can use a laundry basket, you can use a box, you can use this Rubbermaid container here. I have made bread and the pot that I use does not fit, it's too tall to use in my Wonder Box. I use a stock pot to, to make bread and so what I've done here is I have a sleeping bag and then I have this wool blanket. You want to make sure whatever you're having right next to your pot that that material, that fabric, is something that's not going to melt onto your pot. No you synthetics then? No synthetics. You want to have a natural fiber. You can use a towel, but I do prefer wool because it is a very good, um, it retains heat really well and it, and it seems to cook a little bit better. You know, sometimes you can pick these up at garage sales, you can pick them up at the Goodwill or a surplus store. If you don't have a wool blanket, sometimes I've found um, old wool, you know, those ugly wool skirts, and you can take that, cut that up, and use it to wrap around your pot. That works as well, or sweaters even. So yeah, what I do... The sweaters do not decompose in composters, because I tried doing that when I went through some time later, a couple of different times. My old wool sweaters were still in there. I hope they still are, so I can pull them out and save you for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I've done bread before. You can see here... This is a Bain Marie pot. What? What? It's called a Bain Marie pot. I don't know. I just bought this off of Amazon. If you don't have this, I've successfully used mason jars 
And what I did is I took my bread and I kneaded it and then I put it in here and I let it rise. And as soon as it was done rising, the particular lid I, I purchased was not, didn't fit this right. So I simply took a, you know what a Reynolds bag are? These little Reynolds like turkey bags. Mm -hmm. I just put this over like that and I wrapped a rubber band around it and then I placed it in my pot. I'm going to show you. I have all these extra little glasses here and that's just simply, you just want to make sure that your container, whether you're using this or whether you're using mason jars to cook your bread, you just want to make sure you put something else in your pot so that your your bread's not going to flop over and get water in it and then you've got to start all over again. So that's, these are just holding, it's just holding space there. You can see that. I've taken my bread, once it was done rising and I covered it, I filled this entire area here with water and I brought it to a boil and I boiled my bread for 10 minutes. And then as soon as you're done, whether whatever you're cooking, you want to make sure that you have your Wonder Box close by or if you're going to use uh, this type of thing here with the laundry basket or a cooler, you want to make sure it's close to your fuel source because you don't want, you want to try and keep your, your pot and the contents as hot as possible. So as soon as I was done boiling my bread for 10 minutes, I immediately placed it in here and I just covered it really well. And I let it sit. I let it sit for an hour and 45 minutes and now I have bread. So, seriously. So if you'd like to take price some bread, you're welcome to pass it around. So I call it steam baking because it's kind of like that. You can successfully make bread. I have done it when I very first started experimenting. I, I had read about how you can make it in a cereal bag. You know the inside liner of a cereal bag? I just took that, put my bread in there, tied a rubber band around it, and then I put it inside of a turkey bag, and I rubber band that as well. And then I put it in a pot of boiling water, and I boiled it for 10 minutes, and then placed it into the Wonder Box. Wasn't it kind of an odd shape? Loaf of it was an odd shape, and you're not going to get that crust like you would in a normal in a normal oven. But if you have kids or grandkids, they don't like the crust anyway, so it's perfect. It's just that really, really tender. It's, you can experiment with it. Um, I've just find what works for you, but I've made muffins this way. Um, I've actually made it in a mason jar as well. Yeah, how do you make muffins? Do you use a muffin tin? No, I, what I did is I took tiny, smaller mason jars. I took a whole bunch of them, and I bought the reusable plastic caps. If you don't have those, you can take a Reynolds bag and cut it, and then wrap it with a rubber band around it. And that works the same thing, and then I just put several mason jars inside my pot and since I'm not using a, a tall thing like I can make this last loaf, I can use a smaller container. How long? I don't know how long. For bread? I mean for anything. For anything, you know, it's kind of trial and error, but also it's, it's it, I would say the amount of time you would normally put something in a slow cooker is the amount of time I would normally cook it. Like beans example. You cook them for usually two hours. That's the great thing about this Wonder Box is whatever kind of fuel source you're using, you're cutting down your fuel tremendously. Beans, I soak overnight, and then the next morning I will bring it up to a boil for 10, 15 minutes max, turn it off, throw it in here, leave it for a couple hours, and then I've had, I have cooked beans. I mean, it's great because you don't want to sit there, especially in an emergency situation. You don't want to consume, you know, have all your fuel um, gone by just cooking your beans. You want to be able to save as much fuel as possible. And that's a great thing about using heat retention cooking is you're able to conserve a lot of your, your fuel source. Fuel. Now how long will it hold the heat? You know what, I have, it'll hold it all day. Because like, let, yeah, because like, I haven't cooked beans because like, I want to be there because you know, they have to boil, you know, they have to simmer for like an hour and a half or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what if I don't have time to do it? It's like, boil them for like 10 minutes and set them in there and come back at the end of the day and they'll be Still. I have cooked like in the in the afternoon. I have, or you know, mid morning. I've cooked my meals, especially like I've, I use this in tandem a lot with the solar oven. So I'll use actually zero energy to cook my food and to keep it warm. With the solar oven, you have, have you guys been to the solar oven class yet? No. Yes. Okay. You'll have an opportunity to go to the solar oven class, and what I do is I will cook my food that way, um, and I'll throw it in here, and I'll keep it warm until dinner time. 
and I'll, I'll just cook all the different dishes that I want to, and I'll throw it in different, different wonder boxes, and I'll keep it hot. If you find that the temperature has reduced itself and it's not at a temperature you think that it is safe, all you need to do is, when you come back in later that day, bring it up to a boil for a minute or two longer, check the temperature, and then you're good to go. So just use good judgment is what I would, is what well, I would well, do. Well, it would be safe only because you've had it up to that temperature. Now it's cold. Yeah. Leftovers. Yeah. I haven't, you know, we haven't um, gotten sick or anything, but I would, like I said, I would just use good judgment. You want to also make sure whenever you're using um, whatever type of device you're whether you're using a cooler or whether you're using the laundry basket or wonder box, you want to make sure you have as little gaps as possible. If you're finding that your pot doesn't quite fit, you can put like a little hand towel and tuck it in there real good. Um, I made this one this morning, so I didn't quite sew it up right. You <laughs> Sorry. made it this morning before uh, you came? I uh, stuffed it this morning. I sewed it last night, but I stuffed it. Are there See. recipes that, as a matter of course, recoup at some point with them? I went, I went, um, I went reheat and then put back there. Nothing that needs to cook longer. Yeah, if you had to, you could, but I went, I went reheat. I successfully cooked a roast. A roast? A, a roast, yes. I usually don't cook roast, but I was asked to try and see if it would work. So I took a two pound roast and I threw it in here and I filled it up to about here with beef broth. And I cut up carrots and onions and potatoes, and I brought it up to a boil, almost stove, just like this, for 10 minutes, and I stuck it in here for six hours. And I didn't think that was actually going to be enough food for our family, so I did a separate pot on the stove. And when I gave it to my family, they all liked this butter because they thought the meat was much more tender here. Oh, this little cookie. Yes. The the flavoring of the broth, my husband liked much better in here because of the slow cooking. So. That one reviews from them. So. I did. I put carrots, and they were tender. Yep, they were. It worked. Do any of these different stuffing materials are any better than anyone better than other? I will tell you, the polystyrene does. I mean, it does a fantastic job of retaining heat. The only thing you will find when you're doing um, when you're cooking something, it will give off a, a chemical smell. So if you don't like that, if you don't feel it's safe for you, um, then you can stuff it with something else. Um, the great thing about it is it's very lightweight. You can throw this in the washer and then just let it hang dry. This here is pine shavings, um, but if you do get it, something spilled on it, you're not going to be able to clean it up. What you can do is you can take a little hand towel and place it down here before you put your pot on. This, whether using this or this or a cooler method, you can use it to keep things cold as well. I'll show you here. This is ice cream. It's been there for a couple hours. Actually, I had it sitting in my car for a long time oh. outside of the container. I have success. I have driven around in my car in 90 degree heat, and I was driving around, and I still, by the time I got to the location where I was at, we still had to take the ice cream and let it thaw out before we could scoop it up. To How many hours was that? This has been in the car. No, your the, trip. Your. Oh my trip! I was three hours. Three hours in the car in 90 degree heat. Um, I bought ice cream from Trader Joe's, and I don't know if it's because it, just, it was just rock hard, and literally it was it was still rock hard. It all it was was in a paper bag and then thrown into my my winter box there. So it, it will keep things cold. I travel down to LA quite often to purchase our groceries, and sometimes I don't have enough room in our big cooler, so I will take these. I'll take a couple of these, and I'll throw our frozen food. Thank you. In those. In okay. these. Yep. Those would be just great for anybody up here to have for the summertime when they're shopping. Yeah. And they don't have to worry about, oh no, I got groceries in the car, I need to get home. It's like, oh, I got groceries in my car plus the Wonder Box, it'll be fine. <laughs> I have an idea, you could do a long rectangle shape and have dividers. So when you have just few, you can put the divider in there and still have the no air spin down, and then you get more filter to do the divider down. On, on this, yeah. I don't. I don't know if that would work with the with the dividers or not because you want to you want to make sure that just a extra you have as little space as possible. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just take some extra little towels. So which one? Put a little blanket on top. I I I prefer this just because I just don't like I just don't like the smell. That's just me. But I'm real sensitive. Do you so get people, Do you get a but this scent of pine? You, you do. You will. Either one, but you know what? Especially in an emergency situation, I don't think you're going to really care what it smells like. It's going to cook your food and it's going to feed your family, and that's the important part. Um, 
So you, what you're saying is that with the polystyrene, it's going to give you a little uh, aftertaste yep. or whatever? No, you're not going to get anything in your in your food. You're not going to get any aftertaste in your food. It's it's just, just, you'll just smell, oh, just well, smell it a, a in little the, bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. It is, the best it is. It's a fantastic insulator, so it does it does really retain the heat. It does really improve your life. And like I said, especially in an emergency, you know, if you don't want to use it for everyday use, but especially in an emergency situation, I don't think you're going to really, I think you're going to want it keep your food, you know, try and cook it, as, you know, what you can and keep it as long as you can because you're going to probably have limited amount of time to cook your food and whatnot. Uh, here. You want to make sure, though, the, one of the key things is um, if you are using a window box, you want to make sure that it's not on any metal surface because that will draw off your, your heat. So make sure it's on concrete or anything else that it's on. If it's on a, a countertop, that's fine. Would concrete also pull away the heat? Um, I don't think so. I think it's just metal, but I'm not I'm not an expert at that. I would imagine if you have three inches of uh, fire pump, it's a good amount Possibly. You're right. Where do you buy Let's the polystyrene? The... I'm sorry? Where do you buy the polystyrene? The polystyrene bead, the only place I found in town is Kmart. And you can buy it. It's called Bean Bag Filler, and you'll find it in the Bean Bag section, section. You'll have an opportunity to come back on the 22nd if you'd like. We will do all the work for you, and we will sew these for you. And all you have to do is fill it with the polystyrene beads and sew up the little hole. So if that's something that you're interested in, we do have a sign-up sheet here that you're welcome to take a look at, or you can take a look at at the end of your class. Where can we get the pine shavings? The pine shavings. I bought a three cubic bag at the feed store. So they have different kinds. They have they have um, a more coarse one or a more fine one. I prefer the, the a little bit the, more of the fine one just because it molds a little bit easier around your pot. You just want to make sure that whatever you're cooking, if you're cooking for a small amount of people, you use a smaller pot. If you're cooking, and you want to make sure you have as little air space as possible so fill it up with more water. And there's different ways of, you, did I tell you guys about the different ways of cooking with the bread? Did I tell you how I did it in the Reynolds bag? Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned you did the muffins. How long would it take to cook muffins? Muffins? I think muffins are about 25 minutes or so. About not normal. quite. About, it's about normal time. That's what I gauge everything on, is about the same amount of time you would do it in any other way. You explain how you cook the bread mm -hmm. with the uh, jars of hot water. I boiled my, I boiled the bread for about 10 minutes. The bread, you can place it in the, in the <coughs> jars, or you can place it in the Reynolds bag. You're not going to have a, a structured loaf, per se, but it will still work. You can also take a, like a whole chicken and throw it in a turkey bag. I would double it up. Take a whole chicken and wrap it up and double it and put it in a pot of boiling water, and you will have a roasted chicken in that. But I would give that several hours to so, that. More like a steamed chicken. Exactly, more like a steamed chicken. What I would do is, I, I suggest doing single ingredients first, that way you're not using a lot of resources, not a lot of waste of your money and everything, and just trying to experiment with what works best for you. Are there um, instructions or things online that will give you ideas of what you can do um, as far as cooking different things? You can. I have these sheets here if you'd like to take a look. There's different bulletins on. There's some recipe links here, some that I've done, some that other people have done. And then you can just kind of Google it. But like I said, I would what I make in a crock pot. Most things that you can cook in a crock pot, you can cook in here. The main thing is um, how to how to figure out the boiling part. Mm -hmm. I do. I recently I have it because I have a, a son with a, a health condition. But prior to that, I used it every day. Actually, I used it. I used a solar oven, and I would use this in town. Now, why aren't you using them because of the, your son with a health condition? Is it he has to eat? No, I can't go outside in the sun. I can't open my doors during the daytime, so it makes it difficult because I would, I would use my, my solar oven. Oh. Yeah. Yep, you're welcome, Joe. Now, well, with the yeast breads, you said something about boiling, but with the quick breads like the muffins, how would you cook those for a few minutes and then stick them in there? Did you put them in the oven for a few minutes? Like a. I haven't done quick breads in here yet, but I'm sure you could do the same thing. Well, you said you said the muffins. You said you, you've done the muffins. Muffins, yeah. You just do the same thing. Once you just.
mix it all up, and you just throw it in your container. Yeah. Anyone else? So you put it in the container, and then what? Where does it go? It goes. It goes in the pot as well, and you just put water, you just put water around your container. Oh, you just put the hot water around. The yes. Oh. Don't okay. put. You don't never put water. Like if you're making bread, you never put water actually in the container with your your right. mix. You're putting the water around it in the pot. Oh, okay. Yes. If you want to take a look afterwards, you're welcome to and come and take a look. Heat. Yes, because you you I have to boil it. That's the thing is, whatever you're making, you have to boil the water because that's what you're you're going to capture all that heat. You want to make sure that you keep your lid on. This is very important. You keep the lid on for the last couple of minutes. Of, if you can't keep it on for the entire time, at least for the last couple of minutes, so that way it captures all the steam, all the heat. That's actually what's going to finish cooking your food. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome to take a look at the different pots if you want before you leave. So we're actually going to go around.